Good morning, Mustangs from every generation. I'm Rich Suddy, Mustang class of 1975. Our class motto is actually still alive in 75, which is sort of interesting because here I speak to you on Memorial Day 2020. So I guess we did okay. You know, the Vietnam War officially ended April 30th, 1975. Just a month later, me and my classmates would graduate from San Diego. There were no parades for the end of the war or for our graduation for that matter. While at San Diego, I would uh, earn an ROTC scholarship and go on to college. One of our other classmates would earn a scholarship to the United States Naval Academy. Even though it's been almost exactly 45 years, I still remember my teachers uh, who taught me calculus, biology, physics, literature, and history. Well, I then went on to USC and became a naval aviator. It's sort of amazing to anyone who knows me that I would actually serve almost 30 years, given that I chose as an elective in my senior year surfing for PE. Today, as a nation, we honor our military who serve and who served. San Diego and its Alumni Foundation have taken the lead, and I'm very grateful for that. So for a few minutes, we share our collective thoughts and our prayers and remember all those who have given all while defending our freedoms and indeed preserving our very way of life. Whether they got a ticker tape parade down Santa Fe Drive or 101, you know, just by taking the time here this morning and remembering them, you're giving them their parade. We meet together through video instead of on campus in front of our magnificent memorial and in the company of one another because ironically COVID-19, the virus has stripped us of many of the freedoms in ways that other nations through many, many wars have failed to do. I pray that you and your family are well and that we rapidly return to a society that shakes hands and hugs each other soon. Thank you for tuning in and taking a moment to remember those of our classmates. Even though I served, I too needed to pause occasionally and reflect and remember those who came before. I remember one time when I was serving at the United Kingdom Embassy in London as a naval attache, and I, I lived in a very small village with family and I, uh, and, and it was such a small place that the houses are all crammed together and you even share each other's front, front lawns. Or my neighbors were quite elderly about a month after we moved in, I headed out of the house uh, to my driveway in my dress uniform. And I was headed down to London for an, a formal event. And my neighbor who was sitting in his front window saw me, made it to the front porch and asked me to stop before I left. He gathered up his wife and they both came over using walkers and the like. And once they reached to me, they just got about four feet in front of me and paused and they just, looked. They just stared at me and I could see that they were actually looking at the uniform. Well, when he spoke uh, in his British accent, uh, he began with an apology, which is quite also very British. And he says, well, I apologize for stopping you. And I apologize for uh, interrupting your, your evening. But when we saw you in uniform, it brought back so many memories and so many memories of the war. You see, we haven't seen an American in uniform for nearly 50 years. And it just brought back all those floods of memories. So on behalf of my family, I'd like to thank you. And I was stunned. And uh, after composing myself briefly, I said, well, I of course personally had nothing to do with uh, those who came over and crossed the Atlantic and fought beside this great country. But on behalf of them and their families, you're welcome. Winston Churchill once said, the United States is like a gigant gigantic boiler. Once the fire is lit under it, there is no limit to the power it can generate. And when he heard that the Japanese had attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor, Churchill, who was willing to lead lonely Britain against the fight against the Nazis, even though victory was uncertain, famously said that night that he slept the sleep of the saved because now he knew that victory was certain because the Americans had been wronged and he knew the American character 
He was speaking of the character of those who graduated from San Diego just as much. Second Lieutenant Richard Cousins was just such one man. Graduating from San Diego, he went on to fly in World War II and served among those today that we call our greatest generation. His nephew, Tom Cousins, is a Mustang class of 67. Of Tom's four uncles, two were lost in World War II. And we remember Private First Class David Pippin, United States Marine Corps Mustang. According to one post on a legacy page, a Naval officer wrote, you raised your right hand on indoctrination day at the Naval Academy on 30 June, 1965. You joined the class of 1969. Within three months, you had contracted double pneumonia and were regrettably unable to keep up with your studies and the unforgiving physical demands of indoctrination. You left quietly, but with no option. You, but however, you felt compelled to serve your country. And once you were fully healed, you joined the United States Marines. The Naval Academy of 1969 now knows after half a century has passed that you gave your last full measure in Vietnam. Sir, a hero's welcome and a memory we do now give you. Your selfless sacrifice for our country is not lost to your mates of 1969. How about San Diego graduate, Lieutenant J.G. Mike Zerb? Mike was in a helicopter that crashed in the South China Sea in 1966 during the Vietnam War. His, memory, his remains were never found, but his name is today inscribed on the courts of the missing at the Honolulu Memorial. I have certain affinity for Mike's legacy. You see the helicopter squadron he was in was Helicopter Combat Support Squadron 1. That's the very same squadron that was my first tour of duty in the Navy. That squadron's name, HC-1 Pacific Fleet Angels. Army Specialist Raymond Curley graduated a Mustang in 1963. After enlisting in the Army, he served in one of the most critical positions within a platoon, the Radio Man. Well, if any of you remember to to Toy Story and the Radio Man, he was the one with the big time pack on his back. According to one account, he told his, his sergeant that someone else should carry the radio because he wasn't able to run too fast with it strapped on. But instead, he persisted. He did the job. Ray was killed in combat at Saigon and is buried at Rose Hill Memorial Park, Park in Whittier, California. Army Captain Joseph Torek, Mustang, came from a military family, his father a Marine. I know that Army Corporal Armando Diaz Ramos was honored at San Diego specifically on Veterans Day in 2015 as the last name on our memorial. Mando was a Bronze Star recipient, which is the sixth highest medal, even higher than the Purple Heart. Those Mustangs and all those remembered today were warriors, but they were American warriors. Throughout history, the United States soldiers and sailors and Marines and airmen are far more likely to shake hands with former enemies build schools, volunteer in hospitals, orphanages, distribute medical supplies, food, comfort, hug those whom we liberate. liberate. Those classmates, soldiers, sailors, and airmen and Marines, once students here at San Diego, have now become our teachers with their remembered presence here today. And the words and deeds of their lives remind us of human excellence, of the things for which we stand, of the courage that is necessary to maintain those things. They teach us what selfless service really means. Well, you're doing that here today. Let me personally thank the San Diego Alumni Association, Cynthia, Monica, Ken Harrison, so many more for helping build the memorial that stands at our campus, as well as sustaining the annual ceremony that honors our fellow Mustangs and all those who served and gave their last full measure. For the families watching, we cannot measure the depth of your loss, nor can we comprehend the true measure of your own sorrow. Your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your, aunt, uh, your father, your mother, your grandfather, your grandmother, all sacrificed for what is finest about our nation, justice, security, prosperity, and freedom. And for that, every American is in your debt. Thank you, San Diego. God bless you, and may God bless America. Hello, my name is Sue Sieber Cooper, class of 66. 
and I'm here to speak to you today on behalf of Army Air Corps Sergeant Jerry T. Archer, whom we lost in World War II. Jerry, a member of the class of 1939, lived in Cardiff on Montgomery Avenue. His dad owned and operated a garbage collection business. The usable stuff that was collected was sold to nearby farms and the rest dumped behind what is now Oak Crest Middle School. Jerry worked hard helping his dad by driving and loading the truck. Maybe it was the nature of the family business or just his independent streak, but Jerry was always his own man and a bit of a loner. He never quite fit the mold of a committed student, being more prone to smoking cigarettes, hanging out, and partying hardy. Jerry was killed on May 22, 1944, in Hollandia, New Guinea. The battle for Hollandia, a major Japanese air and supply base, was pivotal in liberating the Philippines. Rest in peace, Jerry. Okay. Hi, my name is Peggy Prettyman Cousin, and I graduated from San Diego High School in 1966. I'm here today to honor Army Private Jesus B. Chewy Covarrubias. Chewy was a member of the class of 1940. He lived with his family in Cardiff and was known as quiet and thoughtful. With a reputation of being a hard worker in the citrus groves of Rancho Santa Fe. He loved the movies, often walking to the La Paloma Theater with his friends. Chewy was in the original wave that stormed ashore on the beachhead of Anzio and was wounded in Italy twice before returning to duty to participate in the Allied drive into Germany, where he was attached to the 601st Tank Destroyer Battalion. He was shot by a sniper's bullet in Germany on April 29, 1945. He is buried at Plot B, Row 16, at the Lorraine American Cemetery in St. of Old, France. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tom Cousins. I'm a graduate of San Diego class of 1966. I'm honoring today Army Air Corps 2nd Lieutenant Richard B. Cousins. Dick was my uncle. He was a member of the class of 1940. He and his brothers Tom, Bob, and Ted, and their sister Anne, grew up in the home built by their great-grandfather, E.G. Hammond. The Hammond family arrived in Encinitas in 1883. Dick loved the outdoors and sports, and his classmates referred to him as the king of sports. He was a star halfback on the varsity football team, he was a pitcher for the baseball team, and he played three years on the basketball team. He was also active in school leadership as treasurer of the High White Club. Dick's love of nature took him to Washington State College where he studied forestry prior to enlisting in the U.S. Army Air Corps. On August 17, 1944, Dick was trained to be a pilot at the Army Air Force Training Command at Fort Worth Army Airfield in Texas. When his plane failed to cover from a planned stall and crashed, both Dick and the flight instructor died from their injuries. His death was a double tragedy for my family, as two years earlier, his older brother Tom had also died in a flight training crash. Dick left behind his bride and high school sweetheart, Ruthie Russell, also a class of 1940. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ann Culchin, and I am the proud mother of Leslie Saldana, a graduate of the San Diego High School and the proud grand grandmother of the triplet boys, Cameron, Zach, and Grant, who graduated from the academy. Thank you for inviting me here today. I, I have in the past attended many of your ceremonies and am very privileged to be here with you again today. We are here to honor a graduate of the uh, high school, and I'm going to read a little bit about him now. His name is Army Private First Class Frank Eugene Dawson. And I'm going to put my glasses on right now. It helps me to see. Gene was a member of the class of 1943. Gene lived with his family in Eden Gardens on what is now Flower Hill. 
He was never on the honor roll, said his fellow student, Leo Swaim. He was just, just a nice guy and everybody liked him. Gene was known to love fast cars and driving fast, often seen screeching into the school parking lot with the radio blaring, Artie Shaw or Gene Miller. He loved life worked hard and played hard. PFC Gene Dawson was serving with the 6th Infantry Regiment, 9th Division, when he was killed in combat December 12th, 1944 in Belgium during the Allied drive to the Roar River. He received the Purple Heart. He rests in peace at the Henri Chapelle American Cemetery in Belgium. My name is Dana Gunther. I am a graduate of San Diego High School, class of 1966. I'm here to honor Army Air Corporal Private First Class Melvin A. Johnson. Melvin Johnson was a member of the class of 1944. He lived on Ocean View Street in Encinitas and enlisted in December of his senior year. The military noted he had experience working on farms, as did many of the fellows that went to San Diego in the early days. Melvin was assigned to the Third Army commanded by General George S. Patton, Jr. The Third Army became legendary as it helped liberate Europe. Melvin was killed on December 26, 1944, in the Lorraine region of France, near the German and Luxembourg borders. Melvin is buried in Englewood, California. Thank you for joining us today. My name is John Cannon. I'm a retired teacher of San Diego High School. I'm here to honor Army Air Corps Second Lieutenant Walter Hunt. Walter Hunt was a member of the class of 1941. He was senior class president and described in the yearbook as a hardworking, loads of fun, always on the lookout for the good old student body, a grand young leader. Walter lived in Solana Beach. With a quick smile, slick backed hair, and a letterman's jacket, he was known as a charmer. He was a regular at Fletcher Cove. According to the Mustang yearbook, his high school ambition was to get married. Walter and Jimmy Brass were best friends all through high school until they went to serve. Walt served with the 98th Bombardment Squadron in the Western Pacific, which was focusing on the bombardment of the truck atoll and the Japanese islands of Kyushu and Shikoku. On May 8, 1945, while engaged in a bombing run, on a highly fortified Japanese base, hostile fire knocked out one of the engines of Hunt's bomber. The aircraft attempted to reach Saipan, but was forced to land at sea, killing all but two of the flight crew. Walter's best friend and Jimmy, Walter's best friend Jimmy, came home from the war and married Walter's sister Betty. She told us that she misses her brother every single day. Lieutenant Hunt is memorialized at the National Cemetery of the Pacific in Honolulu. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Monica Mojanay, San Diego class of 1984 and proud parent of a San Diego Academy graduate of 2019. I'm here today to honor Army Air Corps Corporal Joseph B. Medham. Joe was a member of the class of 1938, but he left school early to help out his family store in Solana Beach. He was single when he enlisted in February of 1942. Joe was assigned to the 500th Bomber Squadron, 345th Bomber Group. On March 22, 1944, he was a passenger on a courier flight on a B-24D, otherwise known as a Wheezy at Newton Field, Morobe Province, Papua New Guinea. When the B-24 failed to arrive, search aircraft looked for the plane for several days, but did not find it. 
all passengers on board were declared MIA or missing in action. It wasn't until April of 1983 that the plane was discovered by bird hunters from a village in the jungles of Papua New Guinea. Joe's remains were recovered by the military and brought home and interred in the Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery, San Diego, California on February 10th, 1983. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, my name is Leslie Colchin Saldana and I'm the Executive Director of the San Diego Academy Foundation. I'm also a proud Mustang, having graduated San Diego High School in 1984 and the mother of alumni as our triplet sons graduated from San Diego Academy in 2016. It's a privilege today to be able to be here with you to honor Army Staff Sergeant Donald R. Petrie. Don Petrie was a member of the class of 1939 and he and his family lived in downtown Encinitas. He was a pitcher on the Mustangs baseball team and his low cut two door Chevy Roadster fit the image perfectly of a guy who knew how to live life to the fullest. His quick-witted comebacks and his ability for outrageous dialects caused some of his teachers to think of him as a bit of a smart aleck. But classmate George Wilkins remembers him as a very likable guy with a lot of friends. Don was attached to the 743rd Bomber Squadron, 455th Bomber Group. He was piloting a B-24 on a raid over the Plasti oil fields in Romania when he and his crew were shot down on May 6, 1944. Many of those soldiers who survived the crashes in Romania were held as prisoners of war. Unfortunately, we don't know what happened to Don. His mother purchased a headstone for him in Greenwood Memorial Park in San Diego, four years after his plane went down. It's not lost on me that many of the young men we're honoring today are the same age as my children are now. And I honor all those who have served, and especially those we have lost. Thank you for joining us. Hi everyone, my name is Nanette Salud Clippinger. In 1984, I graduated from San Diego High School and am currently the committee chair for the San Diego Alumni Association. I'm here today to honor Private First Class Thomas Williams. Tom was supposed to be a member of the class of 1943. Unfortunately, we don't have his military records to share with you today, but we wanted to honor him for his service. Jay Williams from the class of 42 remembers Tom, even though he was from the class below him. Although they share the same surname, they weren't related. Jay remembers Tom as a really nice guy. Thank you so much for joining us today in remembering our fallen Mustangs. Hello, my name is Jace Cannon. I'm a San Diego graduate, class of 2019. I'm also the recipient of the Fallen Soldier Alumni um, Award um, for Army Private William Preston Rainey. And I will be reading on behalf of Army Private William Preston Rainey. William Preston Rainey was a member of the class of 1948. He was born in Missouri, but came to California sometime after 1940. His best friend here was John Herbert Miller, class of 1949, who called him Preston. They both served in Korea. Preston served in the 38th Infantry Regiment, 2nd Division. He was killed in action in North Korea on July 21st, 1951, at the age of 22. Private Rainey was awarded the Purple Heart, the Combat Infantry Man's Badge, the Korean Service Medal, the United Nations Service Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, and the Korean War Service Medal. He's buried in Deepwater Cemetery in Missouri, where his headstone reads, William P. Rainey, California. His best friend, John, came home from Korea and went on to have a family. He named his son Preston. Thank you. My name is Monica Mojanay, San Diego class of 1984. I'm proud parent of San Diego Academy graduate of 2019. Today I'm here to honor Navy Corpsman Jack Eugene Vaughn. Jack Vaughn would have been a member of the class of 1949, but he enlisted in the Navy in 1948, two months after his 17th birthday. He lived in Encinitas. Navy Hospital Corpsman Vaughn was a medic serving with Company E, 1st Medical Battalion, 
1st Marine Division. On November 29, 1950, he was killed in action by a missile wound on his back while he tended to his wounded comrades. He was only 19. Hospital Corpsman Vaughn was awarded the Purple Heart, Combat Action Ribbon, the Korean Service Medal, the United Nations Service Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, the Korean Presidential Unit Citation, and the Republic of Korean War Service Medal. Thank you for honoring him and joining us today. Hi, I'm Bonnie Wren, former alumni coordinator at San Diego Alumni Association. I'm here today to read the biography, a small biography of a very well-loved alum from the class of 1959, Marine First Lieutenant James McNally Mitchell. Jimmy Mitchell was a remarkable classmate, as smart, affable, and good-natured as he was athletic. He was always for the underdog, wrote his wife, his high school sweetheart, Jan Bertoncini Mitchell, class of 61. If a coach was giving a guy a tongue lashing, Jimmy would always take the guy aside and lend a word of encouragement. Jimmy played varsity football and basketball, ran track, and was active in ASB. He became class president, senior representative, and was a member of the prom committee, the high white club, and the letterman's club. He set CIF records in basketball as a point guard at San Diego. He also played basketball at Palomar College. He graduated from San Diego State and earned a commission as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Marine Corps. In May of 1965, he participated in the landing at Chu Lai, South Vietnam, by Regimental Landing Team 4 as a platoon commander for Company D, 1st Battalion, 4th Marines. He was killed by a landmine while on patrol August 31st, 1965. He left his wife, Jan, and their infant daughter, Erin Lisa, who he never got to hold. His location on the Vietnam Memorial is panel 02E, line 70. Thank you so much for joining us as we read these biographies. Hi, my name is Holly Teicher. I'm a graduate of San Diego Academy class of 2018, and I am a recipient of the David Dawson Pippin Fallen Alumni Scholarship. I'm here today to honor Navy Lieutenant Junior Grade Michael R. Zerby. Mike Zerby was a member of the class of 1959. His twin sister, Patty, remembers how Mike loved the cadet corps, baseball, and swimming. He enjoyed dances and loved to hike. She wrote, he was a real comedian, an excellent writer, and always made the best of whatever situation he was in. I remember he liked spaghetti sandwiches in particular, or any leftover between two slices of bread. He disliked conflict, was interested in law, and considered becoming a lawyer at one point. He had planned to resume schooling through the Navy. Lieutenant Zerby was serving on the aircraft carrier Kitty Hall on April 15, 1966, when he and another shipmate were killed while making a test flight on a recently repaired helicopter. He was the only crew lost in the accident. All other crew members aboard were rescued. He left behind his wife and his infant son. Thank you for joining us today. My, na my name is Terry Carlson. I'm representing the class of 1964 for the two veterans we lost. The first one is Army Specialist for Raymond Nelson Curley. He lived in an apartment above Curley's garage in Del Mar. He grew up in Del Mar. A classmate said, if Ray was your friend, he took care of you. He was one of the nice guys. Former Del Mar lifeguard captain Grant Larson says Raymond was a real strong guy. If you got into a scrape with someone, he was right there with you. Raymond moved to the city of Orange in 1966. In 1967, he was drafted. He arrived in Vietnam in September of 1967, where he served in C Company, 2nd Battalion, 28th Infantry, excuse me, 28th Infantry in the 1st Infantry Division. Let me tell you something about that. 1st Infantry Division was known as a Big Red One. 
they were a very upfront outfit, very gung ho. It is the longest active infantry division in the United States. They started that in World War I. So we can be very proud that Raymond was in such a gung ho outfit. Shortly after the Tet Offensive started, he was killed in combat in Gia Dinh province. That's South Vietnam. On February 5th, 1968, at the age of 21, he was killed shortly after the Tet Offensive started. He is buried in Rose Hills Memorial Park in Whittier. Hello fellow Mustangs, Lydell Fleming here, class of 86. I'm here in honor, to honor Army PFC, Thomas L. Maricantante. Thomas was a member of the class of 67. He was from Solana Beach and could draw anything he saw according to his brother. Played saxophone and football. His military service was predestined as he came from a four generation military family and attended San Diego Military Academy, which is now Santa Fe Christian, up until the 10th grade before transferring to San Diego High School. His classmates remember him as fun loving but serious. He enjoyed beach, he enjoyed the beach and his friends immensely. Tom enlisted in the Army Corps of Engineers. He served as a heavy equipment operator attached to the 630th Engineer Company, the 70th Engineer Battalion, the 937th Engineer Group, and the 18th Engineer Brigade in support of operations along the demilitarization zone in Tang Tri area. He'd only been in the country for seven months when he suffered multiple fragmentation wounds and died August 16th, 1968. Thomas was only 18 years old. He's interned at Fort Rosecrans. And I just wanna say personally that I am grateful for his service and honored to speak on his behalf. Hi, my name is Monica Coughlin, San Diego High School, class of 1966, and I am here to honor Army Specialist 4, Victor Chief Lopez. Victor was a member of the class of 1966 also. He was raised in Eden Gardens area of Solana Beach, where he went by the nickname of Chief, given to him by his mother. He was very well known for his kind and caring personality and was well liked by everyone. Keith loved music and played drums in a band at his church. He also loved the outdoors and playing sports. His friendly disposition fit perfectly with his civilian job as a mail carrier. Victor was an infantryman in A Company, 1st Battalion, 28th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Brigade, 1st Infantry Division engaged in ongoing combat operations in Bingyong Province, about 50 miles north of Saigon. He had been in country six months when he was killed by a booby trap explosive device on January 17, 1969. He was 21. His place on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial is panel 34W, line 026. Victor's brother, Isaac, tells us that Chief made a strong impact on his fellow soldiers, as many of them came to California to meet the Lopez family and became like family to the surviving Lopez brothers. Victor and I grew up together. He and his friends, Al Gonzalez, Cozo Hernandez, and Junior Magana were close friends of mine throughout my, high, my grammar school, middle school, and high school days. God bless Victor and all of his family. Thank you. My name is Alan Miyazaki. I'm a San Diego Academy graduate class of 2018. I'm also a recipient of the Veteran Scholarship. 
Today, I'm here to honor Marine First Lieutenant Charles Hendricks. Charles was a member of the class of 1960. He was originally from Oklahoma. His family moved to Solana Beach when he was a kid. He went to Palomar College and later graduated from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Charles was well known as being a nice guy among his friends and family, a reputation that continued during his career in the Marines. During combat in the Guangxi province in 1969, Charles insisted in attempting a difficult rescue of two seriously wounded Marines when the crew assigned to the rescue was unable to do so. The second casualty was approaching the door of the helicopter when an enemy round pierced the cabin and mortally wounded First Lieutenant Hendricks. His heroic and timely actions inspired all who observed him and resulted in a safe delivery of the aircraft and all aboard to a secure area. He was the kind of person that always came to the aid of anyone he saw who needed help, as when we went to the extremes to evacuate the wounded the day his helicopter was shot down, according to his friend and fellow Marine Warner and Fold. Charles was killed just weeks before he was scheduled to return home and to be married. He was awarded the Silver Star and buried at Fort Rosencrantz. Thank you for joining us today. Terry Carlson, I am going to talk to you about now, present Army Captain Joseph Michael Torp. Mike was a member of the class of 1964. He loved sports at San Diego, playing baseball, basketball, football, and was a member of the Future Teachers Association. During his tour in Vietnam with the 1st Air Cavalry, he was awarded 33 medals, excuse me, 33 air medals, received the Bronze Star and the Silver Star, and was cited for bravery and awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for rescuing the crew of another helicopter shot down in enemy territory. Let me tell you more about the first air cab. They're all over the place in Vietnam. So Mike was all over the place. Okay, returning from Vietnam in late 1969, he was assigned to Fort Rucker, Alabama as an advanced instrument instructor. Two years later, he was killed in a tragic mid-air night collision with another helicopter during under the hood training. He would have received his BA degree the following March from Troy University. He left behind his wife, Robin Shaw Twerk, class of 1964, and two daughters, Heather and April. He now rests in El Camino Memorial Park in San Diego, buried next to his father, Joseph A., who served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, and his mother, Dorothy, served in the Navy. A very dedicated family, gave a lot to this country. Hi, I'm Luann Palmer, graduate of San Diego class of 1965. I'm here to honor Marine Private First Class David Dawson Pippin Jr. David was a member of the class of 1965. Two weeks after graduation, David was participating in induction day in the United States Naval Academy, but his stint as a plebe was cut short by a case of pneumonia that forced him to leave the Naval Academy. Determined to serve, he enlisted in the United States Marines in 1968. David was a member of a patrol in Quang Nam province that was attacked just north of Phu Lac on July 10, 1969. He and his staff sergeant were killed in a furious firefight, as described in the book, Rice Paddy Recon, a Marine officer's second tour in Vietnam, 1968 to 1970, by his fellow soldier, Andrew R. Finlayson. Andrew said the price was very high for our company and the loss saddened us all. David is interred at Arlington National Cemetery. Hello, my name is John Russell Pompeo, graduate of San Diego Academy, class of 2011 and current teacher. I'm here to honor Corporal Armando Ramos. Armando was a member of the class of 1969. After Armando graduated from San Diego High School, he worked as a ranger at Felicita County Park. He loved the environment and wanted to make sure kids were safe playing in the outdoors. His family remembers him as a helpful, loving, respectful, humorous young man. When he received his draft letter, he told his friends and family he felt honored to be asked to serve his country. Armando was in training in Germany when he and a fellow soldier were killed in a tank accident. November 1st, 1971. 
less than a month before he was to marry his high school sweetheart, Helen Hernandez, class of 1970. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video in remembrance of San Diego's fallen alumni. We are sorry that we cannot all gather in person to do so as we normally do each Memorial Day. We feel it is so important to keep the memories alive of our fallen classmates. All of us who participated in making this video did so with honor and pride for these brave souls we lost, whether we knew them personally or not. On behalf of the San Diego Alumni Committee and our Veterans Advisory Board, I want to thank all of the generous alumni and families whose donations make it possible for us to honor our fallen alumni. Your contributions make it possible for us to award multiple scholarships to graduating seniors in honor of these fallen alumni. It is our goal to continue this tradition each year and may do so through your ongoing support and donations. These contributions also help to pay for maintenance of our fallen alumni memorial permanently located on the San Diego School campus. We must never forget our fallen alumni, nor all the other brave men and women who have sacrificed so much for all of us and continue to do so today. Thank you.